the philosopher who saw a living cosmos behind the visible one. Henry Moore, 1614 to 1687, one of the great Cambridge Platonists, lived in a world rapidly shifting toward mechanistic science. Descartes had just reduced the universe to inert matter moved by external forces. Nature was becoming a machine, consciousness was being pushed out of the cosmos. But Moore refused to accept this bleak worldview. He believed the universe was far too ordered, far too beautiful, and far too alive to be the product of blind mechanics. He proposed instead that behind all physical phenomena exists a spirit of nature, a subtle, non-material principle that animates the world, shapes its laws, and connects consciousness to the deeper reality that gives it life. For more, science and spirituality were never enemies. They were two languages describing the same living universe. Today, his ideas echo in modern debates about consciousness, cosmology, and the mysterious intelligence woven into nature itself. The crisis of mechanism and Moore's revolutionary response. When Henry Moore looked at the scientific revolution around him, he saw a universe being drained of soul. Descartes' dualism split reality into two separate realms, mind and matter. Matter was dead, inert, mechanical. Mind was isolated, ghost-like, trapped within the body. Moore believed this vision produced more problems than it solved, for how could inert matter generate life, consciousness, or creativity? He saw that mechanistic philosophy left no room for freedom, meaning or spirit. In response he proposed the existence of a mediating principle that bridges mind and matter, activity and structure, order and spontaneity. This principle, he argued, was the spirit of nature, an invisible, intelligent force that organizes the cosmos from within. Instead of a dead universe ruled by chance collisions, Moore envisioned a living universe guided by a subtle spiritual architecture. His philosophy was not a rejection of science, but a warning. A universe without spirit cannot explain consciousness. The spirit of nature, a living force behind order. For Henry Moore, the spirit of nature was not a myth or metaphor. It was the real, animating presence responsible for motion, growth, and the harmonious structure of the universe. He saw it as the inner engine of nature, ensuring that physical laws operate consistently and purposefully. Unlike crude mechanical explanations, the spirit of nature acts with intelligence, not blind force. It makes seeds grow into trees, maintains planetary harmony, forms crystals with geometric precision, and even shapes the instincts of living creatures. This spiritual force is not identical with God, but it is permeated by God's will, a secondary divine instrument dispersed throughout creation. Moore believed the spirit of nature explained phenomena that pure mechanism struggled with, life, organization, consciousness, and the consistency of natural law. It is the breath of the cosmos, the invisible field through which divine intelligence touches physical form, a universe filled with degrees of spirit. Moore's cosmos was not divided into rigid categories of matter versus mind. Instead, reality existed on a spectrum of spirit. At the highest level was God, infinite, pure consciousness. Next came the angels, followed by human souls, animal spirits, the spirit of nature, and finally, matter itself. In this hierarchy, matter is simply spirit in its most condensed, least aware form. What we call physical objects are expressions of deeper principles. Consciousness, for more, is not an accident of evolution, but a natural flowering of spirit as it becomes increasingly reflective. He saw the human soul as a microcosm of the larger spiritual reality, capable of rational thought, moral insight, and mystical awareness because it participates in the same universal intelligence that structures the cosmos. In this layered universe, every level influences the others. Reality is relational, interconnected, and alive. Consciousness as the mirror of divine intelligence. More taught that consciousness is not produced by the brain. Instead, the brain is an organ through which consciousness expresses itself in physical form. The soul belongs to a higher order of reality, a spiritual substance that reflects divine intelligence. It is capable of reason, imagination, intuition, and moral freedom 
because it comes from the same source that governs the cosmos. More believed that consciousness is tuned to the deeper intelligence in nature. When we engage in philosophy, contemplation or spiritual practice, we align with the spirit of nature and, beyond it, with God. This makes human awareness a bridge between worlds, a meeting point between the visible and the invisible, the finite and the infinite. Consciousness is not trapped within the body, it radiates beyond it. It perceives truth because it is made of truth. It feels beauty because it recognizes the divine signature woven into nature. For more, to awaken consciousness is to awaken to the divine order sustaining all things. The spiritual architecture of nature and modern echoes. Henry Moore could not have predicted modern science, yet his ideas resonate with surprising clarity. Today, fields like quantum physics, information theory and systems biology challenge the idea of a purely material universe. The concept of fields producing structure bears uncanny resemblance to Moore's spirit of nature. The fine-tuning of physical constants suggests an underlying intelligence. The rise of panpsychism and theories of universal consciousness echo. Moore's assertion that mind is fundamental, not derivative. Even ideas of morphogenesis, how life forms grow with purpose, mirror his belief in a guiding formative force. Moore argued that nature behaves as if it is thinking, remembering and communicating, long before science offered frameworks that hint at similar patterns. His spirit of nature anticipated the contemporary shift toward viewing the universe as a living, relational, consciousness-infused reality rather than a lifeless machine, a living cosmos and the awakening of the soul. To embrace Henry Moore's worldview is to rediscover a universe filled with presence. Instead of seeing nature as mechanical and indifferent, Moore invites us to see it as alive with intelligence, a sacred book written in symbols rather than inert matter. The spirit of nature is the divine heartbeat of existence, the subtle force that carries meaning through form. When the mind becomes quiet and attentive, we sense the world not as a collection of objects but as a symphony of living forces. Consciousness expands, perception deepens, the soul awakens to its place in the cosmic order. Moore's philosophy, far from belonging to the past, speaks directly to a world hungry for meaning beyond materialism. It reminds us that we live in a universe that thinks, feels, remembers, and creates. A universe suffused with spirit. And within us, the same spiritual intelligence stirs, urging us toward understanding wonder and unity with the deeper reality of which we are a part. I see messages all the time in the comments section that some of you didn't realize you didn't subscribe. So, if you could do me a favor and double check if you're a subscriber to this channel, that would be tremendously appreciated. It's the simple, it's the free thing that anybody that watches this show can do to help us here to keep everything going. So, please double check if you've subscribed and thank you so much because in a strange way, you are part of our history and you are on this journey with us and I really appreciate you for that. So yeah, thank you for being here.